Hello people, so full disclaimer before we get started, yes, that was a bit of a clickbait title saying the cards I'm going to show you, which as you can see, they are going to be from Astral, are the most underrated alt arts, is a bit of a stretch. If you guys have been around, you know I like to be as transparent and as honest as possible. Before you get heated, yes, that was a bit clickbait, but now you do need to hang around to hear why. I think so that out of the way guys I'm going to talk about two alt arts from Astral and uh, you can already see them and you most likely already saw them they're gonna be the Dialga and Palkia origin form alt art now later on in the video I'll leave you a timestamp if you go on I'll talk to you about it more and I will show you the cards as I do have them and I'll tell you my thoughts but what I want to say now is I want to compare them because how do you measure value valuation? How do you measure value? Well, most times you tend to mistake the two or use one word for the other, one term instead of the other when it comes to price. So sometimes you measure value with price and you call value price. What I mean by that, if I say, let's, let's take a look at a chart. So for instance, if we go on and say that, the value of the Agia has gone from 25 to $50. Is that actually true? Did the value of this car change? Did the value of piece of cardboard change? Or did its price change? Now you guys know me if you've been around, if you're a subscriber, you know that I care about these things as I do try to provide as much value as I can. As much value. I'm so funny. As much value as I can on my videos. But that of the way, what I, the point I want to make is so we're gonna to try to compare them and uh, think about what these two cards represent. Now, these two are two legendary. They were obviously introduced with Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Now, I do have a strong bias towards Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. How come? Pokemon Diamond was the first Pokemon, first and only, to be honest, Pokemon game that I played because in 2007, I did get a Nintendo DS Lite, it was black, and it came with Pokemon Diamond. So I'm a bit biased towards these Pokemon. However, what I want to do is I want to compare them to some other legendary that represent the Pokemon video games as obviously Pokemon in general. So let's take Urban and Sapphire. So let's take Kyogre and Groudon. Obviously, when it comes to the Groudon, you might think about the OG Groudons, but the most recent one would obviously be the one from Paradox Rift. Now that car, I talked about it in my videos, you probably heard it already uh, to exhaustion, is about over $50. Now that car is over $50. As you can see these two are about 40s. And that car has a specific pull rate of about one out of 410. So mid, around 400 packs. So the chances of you opening a Predator Rift pack and pulling a Groudon is one out of about 400 and something. Whereas the probability of pulling either the Dialga or the Palkia, as you can see here from TG Player, is about one out of 810, as you can see. So it's almost 2x. And yet, it's cheaper. So you would expect it solely based on pure pull rate that these two, the Dialga and the Palkia, will be more expensive, yet they're cheaper. Now, let's compare it to another card from the set, the Stormy V. Now, again, if we once again go back to the G player and look at data, as you can see here, chances of pulling a specific V, VMAX to trainer card is one out of 400 packs roughly, right? And once again, this card is more expensive than these two. Now, that is one comparison I wanted to make with pull rates, as well as compare them to other Pokemon at the same time. Let's let's think about Pokemon Emerald with Rayquaza. Yes, that is more iconic. You had more people back in the hobby that are now older than me. By the way, fun fact, most of you watching are older than me, which makes me very proud. Um, honestly, thank you very much for watching and uh, you know, having people that do listen to this type of content that is older than me makes me really happy and proud. So 
thanks a lot. I'm, I'm going to cry right now. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. So I understand that has a larger fan base. So that's also why. Obviously, I'm thinking about the Rayquaza from Evolving Skies, which might have a similar pull rates. I'm thinking about the Rayquaza from uh, Silver Tempest, the Trainer Gallery, which I think is about $40 right now. Uh, but I also think it might be easier to pull than these two. So I understand that. But let's think about the Maraidon. Maraidon is about $20, so it makes sense to be cheaper than these two. That being said, I don't want to bore you too much. So we'll go on, and uh, for those of you real fans, I'm going to now flip you around, and we'll take a look at the cards, and we'll see if these artworks do deserve a higher price. So let's do something we don't often do here in the channel. Let's take a minute to just appreciate the cards. I know I tend to be focused about numbers, tend to be focused on data, and tend to be as objective as possible. But let's take a look at these cards. Now, full disclaimer, if any of you in the European Union has one or more copies than Diagia Raw, then please hit me up. I will be very interested to buy. Now, I have two of these, which just got in the mail today, by the way. So that's why I'm making this video. But I mean, let's get started with the Palkia. So look at this beauty. So hopefully it will upload in as much of a good quality as possible. So obviously Palkia is the god of space. Now look at this artwork. Look at all the details. Doesn't it give you an idea of like disorder, confusion in a spatial way? You like look at these buildings. Look at what Palkia is standing in this type of chessboard. Look at these rocks here floating around. Look at you, you don't understand what is up, you don't understand what is down. It gives you a sense of Palkia just deforming pace. How does this only deserve to be paid forty dollars, forty euros? And I mean that's not even the texture or the, just, just the artwork itself, which is obviously what you tend to look at on a, on a screen when you're on your computer, on your smartphone. You just look at a plain figure. Now, unfortunately, you won't be able to go into as much detail on the Agia because of the slab, which is why if you do have raw copies in the U, please hit me up. I'm interested in either buying or trading, but we have the Agia here. First of all, look at this. Does this name look familiar? How is a Narita artwork only $40? And once again, Diagia is supposed to be the god of time. Look at this artwork. You don't understand if you have a sunrise, you have a sunset, and you have two stars, two suns, so it's almost as if Dialga, once again, just like Palkia, was diverting time. It's manipulating time. It's, it gives you that sense. You, you have a very deep blue in the middle. And here it looks like the sun is rising. Here it looks like it's setting. Yet you have two suns. You have these beautiful colors, not, let alone the texture. One thing I really like, which is probably not very visible on camera is how Dialga's eye is holographic. You can see it here being red. I'm sure on Japanese car stock it's even better. And look at here, the moons, a lunar phase, these are connected. It, it gives you a sense of Dialga deceiving, manipulating time. That being said, guys, hope you appreciate the video. It was kind of a new format joining data, facts, as well as just finally take some time to appreciate these wonderful pieces of art. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.